What's up, lovies? Welcome back to another Nussle Daily video. What's up, guys? Yo, today we're gonna be checking out some rotten mango. Now, David said it perfectly before we started. Uh, 33 crew members went deep sea squid hunting, turned them mad, and started hunting each other. Now, how that, that can't possibly make us mad. Yes, it's like <laughs> tragic, obviously. You know oh I mean? my but god! It's more grotesque than anything. There's not mis unless there's mistreatment by the government. I'ma have a fit. Yo, I will have a right. fit here. Well, Kevin, now we're we're seeing what video you guys <laughs> wanted us to check out from Rotten Mango, as you guys love Maybe our suggested. Rotten Mango reactions. Who was it suggested by? Do you remember? Do you have it uh, up there? Hope. Hope. Thank you, Hope. Hope, for giving us hope. And also, this video to check out today. Hope. And I was like, well, damn. This is going to be quite chill. <laughs> you know, my mind, my <laughs> stupid mind. This is going to be quite chill compared to other <laughs> videos that we've seen where the government and police officials and people who are supposed to be there to protect you as their only sole uh -huh. purpose don't do shit. In fact, they do everything but. But then Kevin points it out. Like, dude, this is really grotesque. The title itself. They turn mad and start hunting each other. Obviously. Oh that, my that gosh. That's that point. But it's more like an unfortunate situation as opposed to something that could have been prevented. Unless it could have been prevented. I mean, anything's preventable in hindsight. But, Where like, a condo. You know, you, like, you know, everything else that we watched has been like, it's just the government's fucking up. You know, there's there's police there's, uh, force what corruption. What's that called? Corruption. You know, and all that shit. And then when something happens, nothing happens afterwards. Like, yeah. Oh, no, goes, like, serves their time or there's no justice. But this just seems like an unfortunate situation. Uh, very interesting. Situation. Well, we're gonna see. It's gonna probably be really tragic. Like, our intro happened? never matches our outro. Because, like, <laughs> we go in through, like, the worst type of situations here with Ron Mango. Which, by the way, Ron Mango, boat? as um, always, you're amazing. The studies you do to get this video that are just, like, close to what actually happened as possible. They're insane. You were saying, bro. Uh, I, I forgot. I'll say it in the video. All right. <laughs> let's, let's get let's it. Let's get it. it. Enough of this wonderful intro. Yo, bro, what's good, bro? Have you heard the news? What news? Oh, so you happy? Come on, what's the news? Oh, only that Clue Box now has 17 K-pop boots to choose your very own K-popper box from. What? Wait, what is K-popper box? Well, if you must ask, it's a K-pop box full of mystery K-pop merch based on the group of your choice. Delivered straight to your front door. You're telling me I can now support and embrace my K-pop biases and K-daddy straight from my home? Especially K-pop dads. Ooh, now you got me hooked. There can't be more that Clue Box does to top this up, right? Since you ask, Clue Box keeps you in for a surprise. You can get items ranging from photo cards, keychains, stationery, accessories, bottles of apparel, skincare, ramen. Okay, stop, stop. You said enough. I'm getting me a K-pop and Clue Box as well as all my friends right now. Am I one of those friends? Only the tiny that have some discount code, baby. Do I see you? Guys, use NSD5 off 5% off your order. Now, on to the crazy video today. Bada bing, bada boo. Bada bing, bada boo. 2682 was heading straight for the port in Shandong, China. Oh, the giant okay. vessel measures to be about 131 feet long. It was built with the intention of withstanding all sorts of water <coughs> and storms out at sea for extended periods amount of time. So this is the type of ship that goes into the deep waters for years. Oh. Does not come back except only to fuel life. Jesus Christ. It's a little bit strange that the ship is coming home so early. The original plan for this vessel <coughs> was a two year long expedition, departing from China, <coughs> going Damn. all the way to Peru, going Peru. around South America for a while, before finally. Yo, this is, this is Yo, not related to this at all, but like my dad and I, we sent a container of merch stuff. It was supposed to go from the USA, New Jersey, drugs. to Ecuador. Not, not, not drugs, machinery. Yo, it skipped Ecuador because we were, you know, in the whole like crisis. It skipped it yeah. and went down to Peru, down to Argentina, skipped that quarter, went to Mexico, went to Thailand, and then went back to Mexico, and now it's arriving back to Ecuador. That oh, is God. amazing. By the way, amazing vacations. Making you were saying that? Through Japan and I, back to China. Wait, how Pacific does it Ocean. work? Like, does it take that long to get to these places? Wait, where's the... There's... Uh, like, it, it's an... A, like it started in Peru, went up, stayed there for two year, a year, or did it take like a year to get to these places? Dude, I don't know what exactly this graph is about right now. Or does it like stay in that area fishing? What is, what is TLC negotiations? I think also, in order to understand. Also, I got another question. I don't know if you guys know, but it's just. Like, Ask it away. Someone might head. know. Um. Shit. I forgot the question. Damn it! Oh, what happens to the people? Do these people just live on the like on the on the ship the whole time? Like, yeah. Just uh, off, off. 
That's so sad. <coughs> I think so. Just out there for ten years, basically. <coughs> okay. America for, before finally, slowly making its way through Japan and back to China in the Pacific Ocean. The trip was supposed to last two years. Now, for some reason, the deep sea liner 2682 makes it all the way to Peru. And then abruptly, they decide to turn around and come back home just eight months out at oh. sea. Oh, what happened Nobody in Peru? Knew the real reason on why they decided to come back so early. <clears throat> just that something very bad must have happened on that boat. It was made pretty clear to anyone on the docks waiting that this was not a situation of everyone just being homesick. There was a major rainstorm the day that the ship was coming back, and everyone that was gathered by the docks, they had these flimsy little umbrellas that were basically flipping upside down, and they're getting drenched in rain, just waiting for this ship. There's this really strong sense of uneasiness, anxiety. Uh. There were confused family members of passengers that were just standing around like, I don't know what's going on. Why are they coming home? There were men in suits who worked for the company that owned the ship. They're there confused. Almost a dozen police cars were also waiting for the ship's arrival. There are so many questions. Why would there need to be so many police officers showing up for a random boat coming home early? And it's frustrating because when you see a boat that big docking, you see the boat. You feel like it should be here any moment now. You feel like you can scream and talk to the people on the boat. But it actually takes about one and a half to two hours to dock a boat that size. Damn! So for two hours, the family members are just standing there, cold, wet, drenched, and confused. The second that the ship docks, family members are strictly prohibited from talking to their loved ones that they have not seen in eight months. The passengers of this boat, they're brought out one by oh. one, handcuffed. Oh my God. Their heads are shoved into separate police cars, and they're whisked away. People waiting at the port, they're trying to ask questions like, what, what the hell is going on? But the police just ignore them. They get into their squad cars, and they drive off. Clearly, this is not a situation of there being a technical issue with the boat or somebody falling ill. Nah, this sounds like, some like situation of someone ate someone else. Either. Just There's a strand that I see this much. Escorts the passengers away. Men in <clears> full <throat> hazmat suits and goggles, the whole nine yards. They show up. Forensic teams aliens. board the ship aliens. and spray the entire vessel with luminol. Aliens are confirmed, actually, so, dude. It's a chemical compound that you spray onto a surface. <clears throat> it detects blood. Even if someone tries to clean up said blood, it can detect blood that has been diluted 10,000 times. Damn! Whoa. Once it comes in contact with blood, it starts to glow this pale blue fluorescent color. Oh. The whole ship started to glow. Ooh. Like some sort of like badly edited <clears throat> Halloween The whole ship? ship? There was so much, quote, cleaned up blood on the boat. It looked like someone had filled up water balloons with blood and just threw them at the walls of this ship, threw them on the beds, the deck, the cabins. Every square inch of that ship looked like there had been blood. Stairwells, communication rooms, kitchens, some of the beds were completely drenched in blood. Dude, like the craziest the mattress, civil war happened in the ship. But you really didn't need a forensic team to even tell you that something very bad happened on the boat. It's just a numbers game. When the ship embarked on its journey December 27th, 2010, mm. there were 33 passengers on the ship. Okay. Eight months later, the ship would arrive home early with only 11 people oh, on the boat. Where'd they go? 22 people <clears throat> did not make it back. They did not get sick at One sea. Third. They did not get into some sort of Fresh. freak accident. 22 people were murdered on the ship. Two thirds! And out of the 11 people who made it back, only one would share the story of what really what? happened on the boat. Or at least... This is kind of like the... Um, I mean, I don't know why they went mad and started hurting each other. <clears throat> so maybe, maybe it's not like it. But you know that, that plane that got stuck in the Andes? They have a movie on it. That's oh, no, exactly what my mind's going to. I'm like, that's why like, they ate each other. <clears throat> but now... But they were not forced, technically. But it was like a survival situation. This doesn't seem like a survival situation. Unless it was. Not at all. Like, dude, you got a whole fishing boat <laughs> you know you can fish you could have squid you yeah. could have like lobster so it's definitely not about food the boat made Although it back if you haven't watched that movie about the plane like i forget what it's called on netflix do you do, do you know i think it's called movie? andy's no andy's something like that andy uh andy's it's really good though let's see uh, that's a great recommendation let me see for let me see if those andy's movie it's called survive survive it's it's, a good it's based on a true story Yeah.
Yo, that's wild. What happened to make these men go mad? Because I'm assuming, you know, it's not the first rodeo. Like, what happened yeah, in the waters cowboys. of Peru? We would like to thank today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support Words Without <clears throat> Borders, which is a nonprofit that translates international literature in an effort to bring countries and cultures together by closing the gap of language. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team of dedicated researchers, translators, so that they can focus on shedding light yeah, on stories awesome. from all over the world. We'd also like to thank you guys for your continued support <laughs> as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates for these causes. As no, always, you guys love Rotten, Rotten Mango so much that you guys want us to check out but we like, did have Rotten the Mango's videos. So. Chinese researchers Damn. and translators with the gathering of data on this case. Insane. They do as always, job. They with do. any and all cases, especially the international ones, please let us know if there's any anything lost in translation, miscommunicated, or if there are any other additional details you'd like us to know, please let us know in the comments. And also, before we dive into this, a huge source for this episode was an interview with one of the 11 that came back on the boat, and it was done by a journalist by the name of Du Chen. It's translated from Mandarin to English by Words Without Borders, wow. by uh, Nikki Hartman and Emily Jones. And through that, the case was able to gain international attention. So please check out the original sources in the show notes. It's and crazy with that being said, let's get into it. There right? are some superstitions Ugh. that seamen just live by. <clears throat> there are the more obvious ones. Don't turn anything upside down while you're at sea. Like a cup, don't put the cup in the cabinet upside down. That means your ship is going to capsize and go upside down. Uh -huh. Don't whistle on a boat because you're whistling up a storm. Or even oh. the superstition of don't bring bananas on board. So this is like an older legend, but allegedly but back in the day, like in the 1700s, a lot of ships were lost at sea. When they were found later, everybody was dead and there were just rotten bananas everywhere. A lot of banana cargo ships went lost at sea. The theory mm -hmm. being that these boats were trying to move too quickly to their destination uh, to sell the bananas before they ripened mm. and got rotten. So it's pretty fast considering bananas get overripe <coughs> just like that. So they uh, rushed, they hit a storm, they weren't being safe. So oh, all of okay. these things became things to be on the lookout for before your next cruise or before your next ship takes off. Mm. Whistling, bananas, things that are placed upside down. But what do you do about the things that just kind of feel weird? You know, but you TikTok, can't necessarily decide. They have that or not like sound stop. of the North Seas, like you. Dude, I was thinking of that in the Ooh. intro where we just saw the waves. That was really good. You actually nailed it. You. it. Really nice. Again, again. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, okay. No, dude. I wish I was a pirate. Like at you know during the high time, like pirate, oh, like evil, or like pirate, no, like, like Luffy, <laughs> like Luffy. Okay, okay, you want to be a sailor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's wait. Make sure you all watch our uh, <laughs> Luffy reactions. You one piece. Red. One Before piece. the deep sea liner, <clears throat> Lu Rong Yu twenty six eighty two set sail. Something very weird happened. Okay, well, two strange things happened. The first being that one of the crew members had to quit unexpectedly because their mom was run over by a truck and she broke her arm. And everyone was like, okay. That is the best case bit, scenario after you get run a over by a, a truck. Bad omen, but she wasn't on the boat, right? So it should be fine. <laughs> that was the first, mm, maybe this isn't a good sign. The second one was, the ship was still at the dock, preparing for the two-year-long journey. They're bringing in all of the necessities. The crew are getting settled in their cabins. They're doing routine checks. <clears throat> Most of them are actually going to be sleeping on the boat for the next few days, just to get it prepped for departure. Mm. And in the middle of the night, there are these feral screams coming out of one of the crew cabins. Murder! 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 Someone's just screaming bloody murder, literally. It was Chef Yan, the man hired and paid to be on the ship to do all the cooking for the next two years. He's screaming, murder! Damn. Everyone starts briefly freaking out until they realize <clears throat> nobody was murdered. Maybe the man's dreaming. Maybe he had a nightmare. They tell him, hey, go back to bed. Nobody's getting killed. Everyone goes back to their rooms. They start doing their own things, sleeping, playing poker, laying in bed, staring at their phones. And at 1 a.m., he starts screaming, murder, murder, all over again. This time, the captain of the ship had enough. He drags the chef up to the deck and starts screaming at him, sit down and behave. The captain oh storms off and Chef Yan just falls to the floor of the deck 
and he just looks defeated. He looks embarrassed. He sits there for a solid few minutes in silence. And then out of nowhere, ever so calmly, he gets up, walks to the edge of the ship, and jumps into the no. water. What? The ship is still very much in the harbor. Nobody was sure why Shethion decided to jump into the water rather than just walking off the ship. But this is this is a very dangerous situation nonetheless. Wow. It's actually <clears throat> not smart to be in the water at the docks. You could be electrocuted. Did he but live? Other than that, the water is that. cold at night. The wind is strong. There's a lot of propellers in the water. I mean, the no propellers, one yeah. Him. Everyone came out onto the deck trying to lure Shethion back onto the boat or at least back onto the docks for his own safety. But for 30 minutes, he's just swimming around the boat screaming, Murder! Murder! Around the whole ship? Eventually. He's pulled out of the water by another swimmer. boat and sent home. Stamina. I mean, the whole thing was just so strange. So did That's he go? Weird. Yeah, he, he went home. <clears throat> he didn't stay on the ship? No. Oh. Some of the crew were questioning, guys, is this a bad omen of sorts? Because Chef Yan was actually pretty well known amongst seamen to be mentally solid like that's the type of man that you can trust to bring hmm. out to sea for two years and he would be fine some other younger <laughs> seamen they can't handle it they can maybe do six months and then they're at their breaking point mentally they're exhausted they're about to snap chef Yan, he could do three years he's good wow. at being out he's, in deep water good. for long periods of time so what happened the captain's trying to calm the crew down. But his mom passed away a few days ago. Oh. So, you know, his family has been going through a lot. He really wanted the job for the money, and he said he was ready to come back to work. <laughs> Clearly, he wasn't. No big deal, guys. Shit happens. We'll find another chef. <clears throat> the crew just kind of chalk it up to grief and loss. They work on finding a replacement, Chef Zia. <clears throat> chef Zia is hired to replace Chef Yan. And maybe you believe in superstitions. Maybe you don't. But Chef Zia would be the first to be murdered on the ship. Damn. Seven and a half months into the trip, one of the younger so passengers, that would have been Charlie, Chef Yan. would yeah. have a full snap yeah. from yeah. reality. <clears throat> he had been begging the other shipmates for this moment. He, he'd been asking all the passengers, when is it my turn? <laughs> Literally asking to see if he could be a part of this. And it just felt good to finally be accepted after seven and a half months. Uh -huh. He leaned down and he touched this oozy, sticky surface. So he dipped two fingers into the liquid. He brought it up to his face and he hesitantly swiped it on his cheeks. Why? It was a red streak. And he started smiling because it felt good. So the he blood? bent down and he just starts <clears throat> erratically wiping his hands into the liquid and then fanatically, like frantically, smearing it all over his face. And he screamed, I've been bloodied. Huh? His face was bright red. He was smearing the blood of his first human kill on the ship. And to oh. him, it felt so good. What? Mr. Du, the young journalist, Sorry? he heard about the very suspicious ship that turned all the passengers <clears throat> crazy to the point where they started hunting each other on the ship. I mean, it's more like the premise of a horror movie. It's like Hunger Games on a boat than a real life story. So Mr. Du... He can't forget about this case once he hears about it. He thought about it nonstop. It's taking up all of his brain space. It just didn't make sense. Was it collective insanity? Mass psychosis? Like, there have been cases of shared psychotic disorders where two or more people in very close relationships, they share a specific delusion together. The inducer, the primary person with the psychotic disorder, influences another person to feel those delusional beliefs. It's rare to see shared psychosis in even two individuals, and even rarer to see it in large groups, let alone 33 passengers on a ship. It, it is a tad bit different from cults, if that's where your mind is headed, where the cult leader maybe more or less believes in the delusions that they're sharing with others, but they're just more hellbent on power and praise and money more than anything. This, this seems like a group of people <clears throat> that would have to be in a collective state of psychosis to start hunting each other out in the deep ocean. I think the most recognizable case of shared psychosis are the Erikson twins. Do you remember this case? Yeah. Ursula and Sabina Erikson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swedish twins. Mm -mm. They were otherwise ordinary sisters who, in May of 2008, they made headlines for their really disturbing behavior. I mean, they were just seen on the side of the highway, looking determined, calm almost. And then they suddenly started sprinting straight into oncoming traffic. It was chaos. One of them, Sabina, was briefly arrested, later let out without a full psychiatric evaluation. Wow. She ended up murdering a man that was just <coughs> oh. trying to help her. Wow. I mean, it was a whole thing. That is probably the most famous example of shared psychosis. 
some people just kind of chalked it up to that because this was only like three years later. So people are thinking maybe this is shared psychosis with 33 people, 33 passengers. Or maybe it's a mass murder mystery that we'll never really be able to solve. But journalists did not think so. He traveled all the way to this small, tiny little windy town in the northeast part of China. And he was going to interview one of the remaining passengers of the boat. One of the 11. Mr. Du gave him the alias of Zhao Mucheng, but we're going to call him Zach. Okay. Zach had been released Zach. from prison maybe just like a year ago. Oh. He was in his late 20s, but he looked much, much older. And he had this very shifty, uneasy air about him. Like he didn't want to talk to you about anything. I was going to say yes, like Kevin, but I was way I too know. confused. I want to know about the people. I mean, this can't just be a situation of shared psychosis or evil people that happen to end up on the same ship together, right? Was something they ate? No, it, it had to be something was different. Was it the squid? Charlie was normal before we got on the ship. The one that smeared blood all over his face? He's actually the one that introduced me to the opportunity in the first place. Mr. Dew looked at Zach huh? and said, Tell me about how the killing started five years ago. This is the story that Zach shares. Now, just keep in mind, okay. this is just about everything we know about what happened on the ship, but it's very hard to say if this is, without a doubt, the solid truth. There are conversations online about whether or not Zach is a survivor, like he claims he is, or if he's a killer that got luckier than the oh, others. Sh no other survivors have been interviewed, and none of them have come forward, at least that we know of, so this is what we have. What? Zach said, Maybe they're afraid Charlie to come forward and the rest of them. So, so, so this, this whole theory that we have about this specific case comes from one guy because the rest of the survivors don't want to talk about it. I don't know how they don't talk about it. I feel like they should. There should just be something. There was no case made. No police records. Nothing. Because now this just comes from one guy. We, I don't know how much we can Passing believe this one guy. Other, they were just there to hunt squid. Lu Rong Yu, 2680. We just want squid, squid, you know? Ship. And I guess I never gave it much thought on how squid was caught. If you made me answer it a few weeks ago, I probably would have made a guess. Is a kraken a squid? Or is it a kraken? <laughs> I think it's a giant squid. A, or an octopus. Is it an, a giant octopus? <clears throat> a kraken. <clears throat> anyway. I heard it was so, the penis of a whale. Like, because it would be, it would just pop out. The and kraken? I think it's that. The penis of the whale would pop up. And then people would be like, that's a crack! Because it would look like a giant octopus. Like Damn, that whale well be like doing the belly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just chilling. Just chilling. And they're like, it's a crack! And then the whale. Well, because people were out at sea all the time. So then the whale got a stiffy on, and then you know what happened. I don't know. Boats go out into the sea, so send down some wood. nets, and catch squid, right? Mm -hmm. Squid fishing feels more like squid games. There's human trafficking, forced labor, runaway Holy boats, shit. and people thrown into the ocean, beaten, abused, injured, what? thrown overboard to their death to catch squid for a profit. It's what actually basically a cartel. Mm -hmm. It's the squid cartel. It's Damn. terrifying. Squid games. The squid fleets boats Damn. are sent out into the deep waters of the Pacific Ocean to Why catch is that so squid. normalized? They will usually stay out there for a year or Money. two. Every single day, every single person on that boat wakes up and their sole existence is catching squid. Cutting squid, freezing squid, taking a brief nap, and then catching squid, cutting squid, freezing squid. Most of the squid population, the colonies, they thrive in South America water. Now, most of the squid catching companies are Chinese. Mm. They're not mm. South American companies. So the journey alone from China to the coast of South America, where most of the squid mm. fishing is done, mm. even that journey is rough. It takes As two a South months, American, I find two that months to get there. And it is not a smooth sailing experience. Like this water is not known to be nice, kind, and forgiving. No, I don't live there. Then once you get into the open waters, you are just in the middle of the ocean for one to two years. There are storms. That's insane to me. You can't see land. One <laughs> to two years. You are years. that far into the ocean. You don't see an island even with binoculars. There's no light darkness. pollution. Like it's night pitch special. black outside at night. And that's when the fishing starts. At what? night, the fishermen wake up, head to the deck that's covered in squid ink. No matter how much you try to clean it, it will never fully be gone. So it's just black? And then it's they fish at night on top of that? To clean it, like the mucusy substance is left over. Oh. Then you get up to the deck and you turn on these giant bulbs. It looks 
eerily bright. It's like an eerily bright lit auto body shop. There's oil oozing around, squid ink, it's mucusy. The lights are so bright, even if you look at it or open your eyes for more than one second, your eyes start to water. Wow. The light bulbs are the size of bowling balls. Light is the thing that I imagine the so. Sport. Like the ocean the at night is just the water, pitch or even darkness you because the light is shining down on you and the ship. So you probably feel vulnerable in the middle of the ocean, and the ship is glowing this strange blue green color straight out of a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. A New Yorker piece stated to the squid, the human squid catching ships, they must feel like aliens glowing in vessels approaching. And then you just want to go see what the light is about. You just want to see <laughs> why it's glowing and why it's floating. And then you get probed. And so you go and you see a rope come down with some yummy food. So you bite onto it and suddenly you're being lifted up onto this new vessel that you've never seen in your entire squid existence life only to be gutted and killed for more Damn. aliens to eat. And the ship is the only the thing. The start off is a cute story. Like a bright bullseye, a target. You can see the light from almost 100 miles away. That's how bright the lights are. And it doesn't just... How many miles? Eyes. It's hot. 100 the miles? It's roasting down your back while you work during the night. The ocean is known to be cold during the night times. It's hot on that ship at night. Wow. Squid fishing is not like regular fishing, where you throw in a line and you patiently wait for a tug. Each worker gets to operate three squid fishing machines. It's a terrifying, mechanical-looking process. It's the type of process, like a factory machine, where you feel like if your sleeve of your shirt gets caught, you're going to be out an arm. That's what it looks like. Each worker has three giant wheels that keep turning and turning. And it's just bringing in more of this metal line. And every so often on this metal line... There's just squid on the hooks. It's artificial bait. It's not even real bait for squid. They Bam. come up. The hooks have sunk into the squid. It's all done by machine. The worker is there to unhook the squid. And sometimes if there's a really big squid caught, they have to tug on the line manually really hard. Sometimes it takes multiple men to Jeez. bring it out of the water. Oh. Some squid can get up to be 220 pounds. Oh. It's a physically demanding job that challenges a worker's strength, stamina, yeah. not just physically, but also Jeez. mentally and emotionally. Yeah, Your you skin never feels almost. dry on those boats. Yeah. Whether it's from the seawater during storms or the boat never just fully dries or the squid ink that's just covering every surface of this freaking boat, you've missed <clears> the <throat> feeling of dry skin. Your hands feel like sponges, which is probably not the best when you have to work with sharp objects to cut and gut the squid. Jeez. But the wetness, that's probably the least of a squid fisher's complaints. You just want to get into a flow state where your hands are working, but your mind is on land. Your mind is not on this boat. Because if you're not, you're going to start getting frustrated with the sound of the squid. Did you know? What? I was thinking that, like, what sound caught, does the squid make? They hiss. They it's hiss? It's like, a, you know when you have a kettle oh God, that's, that's on the terrifying. stove and it starts hissing? Yeah. Squid hiss. Oh, man. They turn translucent and they what? start hissing at you. Squid huh? fishers, they try to block out that sound as best as possible because imagine how many squid are just hissing. But it's not easy. Yo, I need. And there's nothing that you can do to block. I need to listen to a squid hiss. Could you look it up for everyone yeah, wondering? Yeah. I'll look it up myself. I, I can look it up. Squid. She. You kind of heard it. They kind of put it in there. They kind of put it right. Squid hiss. When captured. Oh, squid kiss. No. Squid. Uh, Did you find it? Anything? Uh, a little bit. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Hold on. We're at. Did you look at the time that we're at? Oh, wait. Then we can come back to it. Oh, okay. I would say just showing your own screen is fine. <clears throat> but no, we no, no, are at 2117. Okay. Okay, come here, boy. Oh, there it is. It's just flashing different colors. Oh! Out of the water, this squid's color flashes from a devil-like red to inky black. Ooh. So this is the beast. This is a Humboldt squid. Uh, and just what a weird animal it is. What the, the heck? Out. The beak. The no. There, surrounded by tentacles. And inside there, you can see the beak. 
I have no doubt this is what caused the scar on Raphael's shoulder. Oh, and it's shit. A brutal weapon the wow. I heard about. It's the key piece of evidence that ties all my stories together. And they have more weird anatomy. This is the siphon. This is what it squirts ink out of. Oh. These bizarre oh, I thought it was from the from like something out of a horror movie. An alien animal totally hole. unlike any fish Me too. I've ever it's a different hole. Quite an impressive beast. Going back. This oh. squid is a decent size, but I'm told they grow twice as long. Wow. Two hundred pounds. Times the weight. Yeah, two hundred. Yeah. And there's something even more terrifying about these animals. What? Within seconds, another line goes. Whoa. And they keep coming. Lots down here. These cannibalistic devils rise from the depths to oh. attack other squids. Oh! Oh! Wow! I'm told they hunt in packs of more than a thousand. Jesus! Then, as suddenly as they first appeared, they're gone. Damn! They started eating the other squid. Dude, well, it was ca cannibalistic. Same Diablo Rojo that invaded Mexico. Oh, okay. Wait, it was in the beginning. The sound of this. Yeah. Okay, come here, boy. Here we go. It's like. Okay. It kind of sounds, you know, like uh, the the spiders in uh, in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, that's the sound. All right. Where were we? <laughs> Imagine that a bunch of times. That's scary. I think we're like a 21. 21. But I think about a boop. The deep sea line. Yo, the beaks though. Squid hiss. That's what? it. Yep, that's it. That's the sound too. They turn translucent. Imagine a bunch of those though. And they start hissing at you. Huge. Squid fishers, they try to block out that sound as best ah! as possible because imagine how many squid Jeez. are just hissing. But it's not easy. And there's nothing that you can do to block out the stench. Deep sea squid have high levels of ammonia. The oh, air on the ship smells like the world's most God. collectively worst smelling urinal stall oh, ever. Shit. By the end of the night of squid fishing, the entire deck floor is overflowing with squid. <coughs> you can't even walk around the deck anymore. It's all squid. And they're all hissing at you and they're all oozing squid ink. And trying to bite By you. the end of the ship, right? your skin smells like pee and squid. Oh. And your clothes, they can't even be washed. Most of these ships don't want to waste resources on the workers for their clothes. So the fishermen, what they do after a dirty shift is they tie up all their squid ink covered clothes, toss it into the water, and it drags behind the boat for miles in the salt water Two. that's how they do laundry but catching squid is only half the job the same fishermen have to now weigh measure wash and sort the squid into metal trays for freezing and bagging. Damn. first you have to separate the squid into two groups the squid that are under nine pounds and the ones that weigh over nine pounds the ones below nine pounds have to be cleaned and placed onto trays ready to be frozen while the big squid they have to be cut and separated into fins trunks heads then at the end of the workday, each worker has to bring around 50 trays of squid down into this massive freezer on the ship. Each tray is said to weigh about 33 pounds, so you have to go up and down the cramped stairwell 50 times with these trays. With 33 pounds! Every couple of weeks, a secondary boat will pull up to the main squid ship and take the frozen squid so that your freezer is empty for more squid. And if the squid cartel, or... I mean, the squid company, doesn't think that you've caught enough squid in the allotted amount of time, you will be hearing about it and you'll likely pay for it. And what? then once the workers are what done with the it, hell? they have to sweep the deck, clean the cabin, scrub toilets, mop showers. They do this 16 hours a day, what? six days a week for two years straight. But that's when there's a moderate amount of squid. I'm assuming the, the pay must not be so bad. For, yeah, it's probably, these, I mean, it's for people right. like this to go and sacrifice themselves like this. Because I'm like, if you want to get paid and you're willing to do that, I'm pretty sure there's other types of like labor intensive jobs you well, can do if you're willing to do this much physical labor. There's a massive squid colony moving through the area. Fishermen are forced to work three days straight, only getting in about one hour naps a day. A day. <sighs> if you decide halfway through, Guys, never mind. I don't want to do this anymore. Forget the money. You don't even have to pay me for the past six weeks. Just take me home. There's no way I can do this for another year and a half of my life. They're not going to take you home. 
There are a lot of alarming reports that people have been shackled, beaten, and starved, forced into submission to keep fishing for squid. Even oh. if you're not trying to quit or go home, if you make a mistake or you're too slow at catching squid, you'll likely get beat. What the Some fishermen fuck? get injured on the job. Weaker men, they start going crazy just from not seeing the land for two years. Some fishermen die from low vitamin levels. Apparently, they get swollen like melons before they pass. Their eye whites turn yellow. They're exhausted, overworked, barely seeing the sun. They're not eating well. Why? Because by month four, most vegetables and fruit have run out on the ship. Not that the workers were wined and dying to begin with. And if you're not injured and dying, you're watching everyone around you injured and dying in these brutal conditions. Damn. And the only stress reliever that you can somewhat afford on this boat, because you're basically cut off from the rest of the world. You can't contact your family or the outside world. Whatever you brought on that ship with you is all you have. You brought three books, you better reread those three books. A lot of crew members will just chain smoke as a stress reliever. But there's no gas stations out at sea. If you run out of cigarettes that you brought in the past two years, you have no more cigarettes. Unless you purchase them from the ship, from the company. They have like a little convenience store. Oh. The company will sell the workers cigarettes at maybe 20 times the price that they would be on land. Whoa. A lot of workers, if they're not wow. careful, they can smoke away all the money that they earn in two years. Wow. wow. The idea that wow. that's even possible I mean, is kind of insane. It's freaking insane. Oh, that's freaking insane. Relax. If you miss one day of work, you will get beaten and they get two days of pay taken off. Oh. And just something to note, I went down the rabbit hole. The squid fishing industry is terrifying and China does dominate in that industry. There are a lot of questionable Chinese companies that have been called out for very illegal, very ethically immoral things that they have done to catch squid and the abuse that they put their workers through. I mean, some of the companies are just pure, pure evil. But the New Yorker, they put out a piece of the squid fishing industry and at the very end of their piece, they added food for thought. Because it's very easy to just point the finger at one very, very deplorable part of the food chain. But over 70% of China's seafood catch is exported out of China and into places like the United States and the EU. Yeah. Damn, what's the percentage on that? I am a creature of habit, and this is my 70, habit. 70. Usually at the wow. end of the year, I will set all of these ambitious goals for myself for the next year. And by the end of January, I feel like I get too busy or there's too much going on, and then I just don't really get around to it. So this year I decided, you know what? I don't need to reinvent myself. Maybe sometimes I just need to rehydrate. I am a thousand Liquid percent a mom friend who will tell you if you have a headache, are you hydrated? I'm gonna ask you that. And my life feels clear when I'm hydrated. So this is my favorite thing to do on the go at home every single morning, just because I like habits and routines. I just like to create very easy, simple ways for myself to get to my goals. With Liquid IV, I don't have to pretend like I'm a completely different person and make all these New Year's dreams come true. And I can just be myself, more hydrated, biohacked Stephanie. So I'm gonna go with the white peach one. This is uh, probably one yeah. of my favorite flavors of all time it's absolutely incredible liquid iv hydrates two times faster than water alone and oh it's because liquid iv has three times and i'm just drinking this stupid water drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients i just grab like a big container of water like 16 ounces i would say throw in a single one of these packets that are so easy to travel with throw them in your backpack throw them in your purse i don't go anywhere without these i have these in our car because i'm like this is so good they also have three new flavors. This is the white peach. It tastes like a sweet drink. Like it tastes like a treat for myself. They also have green grape, lemon lime. It's so good. And it's with zero sugar, no artificial sweeteners. I had to force my sister to try it because she was skeptical and she's very picky about the taste, but it's so good. And instead of sugar and artificial sweeteners, Liquid IV uses a proprietary amino acid allulose blend. It's like a natural sweetener with the same taste and texture as table sugar, but healthier. It's perfect right now because I've been talking for a while and mm. usually my throat feels a little bit dry and I feel like my mouth just needs some hydration. 
I get a little itch at the back of my throat and I just had a few sips of this. It is so refreshing. I feel like I could keep talking for hours. I never film a pod without some liquid IV in my water. If you have a job where you have to sit through long get meetings your bag, or, right, bag out. Time, or even if you're just the type of person who needs a yummy drink, who doesn't drink enough water as you should, and get some liquid this is IV perfect for you. Food. It's also oh, a great so way to support your body and restart after a long time. Yeah, original video is description below. Having, like, a little Make sure you go check out the original video, outfits. please. There's even liquid IV for kids. You want to get yourself so some liquid Stop doubting yourself. You feeling you life's adventures. <laughs> you just need to get rehydrated. For all you talkers out there. Liquid IV hydration multiplier. Kev, you saw you need like you need some liquid IV, bro. Or get Dude, I probably wouldn't have got sick if I was on liquid IV. Liquid <laughs> liquid 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 and use but we are thankful for having check out. That's twenty yes. percent off your first order when you shop better rotten. hydration today using promo code Rotten at liquidiv.com. Right okay. Right oh boy. So this is the kind of ship that they're on. They're not on a nine-month cruise. They're on a hell journey for two years. Do you remember Charlie, the one who smeared blood all over his face? Mm -hmm. He was the one that got Zack the job in the first place. Zack had never been on a boat like this before. Neither had Charlie. I mean, you would imagine that Shinfa Foods, the company that owns the ship, they would be recruiting real fishermen that know what they're doing to go out there for two years. But no, they were honestly just taking about anyone. Charlie was on the boat because he burned down a building. By Stand accident, call. though, Whoa. he worked for a bus company before this, and one night, Charlie got super, super drunk, started playing mahjong at a co-worker's place. He's drinking. One thing leads to another. He burns the building down. Damn! Look, we don't know exactly how he burned the building that down. That is it such an escalation. Accident, but not really, because he was drunk and being careless. The whole building <sighs> caught on fire, and because he started the fire, he was in a ton of debt for the building repairs. And he thought, you know what? This is the best way to make money quickly, because even if I make money right now, here's the problem. I keep spending all my money. I keep going and spending it on rent and going out to these restaurants and wanting to hang out with my friends. If mm. I'm on this ship, how am I going to spend the money I'm working on? Oh. And I get free room, three meals Cigarettes, a day. Cigarettes, perhaps. It's very little expenses. Zach describes Charlie as being the type of guy that was, was pretty excited say, about I, this whole I experience. He wasn't mo the salary for it. If you guys saw me on my computer. Oh, um, whoa. The salary. Now, it's China, so I don't know. I look up squid fisherman's salary. Okay. But, oh, okay, there it is. Okay, okay. It says the estimated total pay for a fisherman at squid is... Uh, around seventy thousand per year, in like in China or just? Hey, that's see, that's the thing. I don't think any any are popping up for me in China. Seventy thousand like, a year. That's huh? what I got. Uh, sixty eight. Sixty. At squid. So here it says, as of right now, right now, May twenty twenty three. Well, the study of this in China, the average salary in U.S. dollars is forty nine thousand two hundred. Okay. So, so a, 60 on average will go. Because I keep seeing it. it. It depends on, I guess, your experience or something. Probably on the job because it depends on how long you're going to be done and all that jazz. Interesting. But also, that's, that's basically that a year without having any outward expense because you're not buying anything. You're not going out to the club. You're not, you're not having fun. You're not doing anything. You're not buying any video games. You're not doing anything. Right. On you're just thing. living to work. You're just like two years of your life. You're putting Apart into from this. from maybe buying a cigarette, you know, for 20 times the price. Those that don't, they got a lot to gain from it. Yeah, right. For, that, for those Honestly, two years. If you yeah. double that, that's 120, 100K or so for, you know, fishing in a row. You, you come out with 100K. That's enough to buy, put a down payment on a house. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do those two years. And then I'm, I'm, I, I, can buy, I can buy a house or whatever. Okay, well, we can see so why it's there. It's not too bad, especially if your options are limited elsewhere. Yeah, yeah and especially if that on a building you burned down. <clears throat> oh, that, yeah. Especially if you owe money. Mm. Being around, dragging his feet, like complaining about, oh, I can't believe I have to do this because I'm in debt. I didn't even mean to set the place <laughs> on fire. He was actually a happy-go-lucky kind of guy. Zach and Charlie knew each other from working at a restaurant together. A few summers back, they both worked at a barbecue restaurant. And I feel like this was a bad omen in and of itself. What? It was a very rainy summer. They worked at a barbecue restaurant outside. Oh. They made next to nothing working together. It seemed like these two friends, they just did not have the best luck when they were put together. So Charlie calls Zach. 
tells him this is the job of a lifetime. The like, fishing company bro, is going to pay us 45,000 yuan a year. I got the year. job for you. The average salary in China in 2010 is closer to 35,000 yuan. This is with a college oh. degree, like an office job. So this is a big deal. They don't care about your education. How much you say? You yell. They don't care about your work experience. <laughs> did you see the amount? Did you remember? I heard 40,000, I think, you won. 2010 okay. was closer to 35,000 okay. won. This is with a college degree, like an office job. Okay. So this is a big deal. They don't care about your education background. They don't care about your work experience. That's I mean, this is unheard of. Important. Side note, 45,000 yuan is about six and a half thousand US dollars. So $6,500, which I know might not sound like a lot of money because of the conversion rates. But if you're in America, this would be like the equivalent <laughs> scenario. Someone is offering you $95,000 a year compared mm. to the national salary average of $74,000 a year. And that 74,000 is with people with college degrees. They're getting corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. So ninety-four thousand dollars for someone who didn't even graduate high school—that's crazy. That's I mean, so I think that lucrative. Helps put into perspective, right? How desperate they were for this type of money. And not only do you get that forty-five thousand yuan, you get a bonus when the job is complete and you land back on land. Zach's liking the idea of it. He's like, I have a girlfriend that I really love, and I know that I'm not earning enough to satisfy her and marry her. Like her family's so you're gonna, gonna leave her for happen. two years. So this mm, will be my sacrifice. Genius. Go on this ship for two years. When I get back, she's makes gonna sense be my wife. to me, dude. And hopefully Definitely. he wouldn't spend too much money on the ship because I mean, living expenses would be very low, and he wouldn't even have time to that go sounds, and drink mm, and That's not like the friends. wave. Company gives you three meals a day. This is perfect. Side note, every crew member, this is kind of important later, you get a weight limit of luggage and supplies that you can bring. So you do get three meals a day, you get a bunk bed, but shampoo, conditioner, all of these things you need to bring for either two years mm. or you can buy them at the store on the ship, but oh, the store is very expensive. That's some BS, yo. The fact that they make you buy yes, essential like products. Yeah, you weigh all of your stuff and then, yeah. you know, it's, it's just really bizarre. Some people would use it to bring beer. Some people would use that weight <laughs> to bring cigarettes, water bottles, the soft weight? drinks, instant noodles. Right, how much weight are we talking Again, about? you can technically buy all of these on the ship, but it's going to be very, very expensive. On the boat, a carton of cigarettes costs about 26 US dollars. Back at Whoa. home, yeah, cheap cigarettes in China can go for as low as a few dollars for a full carton. The markup is unhinged. Damn, yo, they are Some making money. Some of the workers had money. plans to make even more money, though, because they took out a loan. There was a guy named Lou who did this. He took out a loan, bought a ton of cigarettes, enough to stack them up from the bottom bunk to the oh, ceiling. And, then and the plan was to the sell them later to the other workers for half the markup of the ship. So instead of $25 a carton, he was going to sell them for $15 a carton. Oh. He would still be making like $12 Genius. a carton of profit. They would never get to do that, though, because 22 people would be murdered. Never mind. December 27th, 2010, the first day of worked, open you know, water. It would have worked on this gagging. Thing. <laughs> hurling breakfast, lunch, and dinner over the side of the boat. I mean, just looking at the cup noodles that they stockpiled in their rooms, they want to gag, they want to throw up. Because the fishing company just wanted to recruit anyone that they could get. Most of the men on the boat had never been on a boat. Wow. The seasickness was something that they could not handle. They would rush to the toilets, they would rush up to the deck to just throw up. They would come back looking frail, gray, green, and their hands would just be on their temples trying to massage the nausea away. This is very interesting, but the minute that you can't see land anymore, a lot of people report feeling uneasy and it makes them feel even more seasick. It's just interesting. They say that they feel a little bit lost, like there's a lump of anxiety in their stomach when they can't see land. So they're dealing with that. They're regurgitating every solid food that they've consumed in the past 48 hours. And side note about this, this is very shady, but a lot of the guys that were on the boat, there were 33 people on the boat, all men, very fascinating to note, most of them don't even have a marine license, which means that they're not legally allowed to fish at sea and they're considered illegal laborers. Oh, damn. The company said, it's fine, it's fine. We do this all the time. Everything will be fine. We just have to smuggle you onto the main ship. So on the main ship, only the crew with certificates and licenses were allowed to be on board. Customs and immigration would let them through, do a check of the boat, and then 10 minutes later, a little speedboat would pull up with all of the other <laughs> Yo, workers, all of them, so that did not have their licenses. Illegal. I mean, they just like throw down a little rope. Oh. Everyone knew that this was illegal. It just happened. 
Yeah, it just happens. The company told the men, well, if we don't do it this way and you have to get your license, then that's money out of our pocket, which means less money for you because, you know, we got to make our profits too. So that doesn't make sense. Do you want more money in your pocket or do you want a marine license? The workers were like, I want more money in my pocket. The seasickness would last for about 16 days. From there, it was smooth sailing. The first so two really? months of this trip, it was like a cruise more than anything. Oh. Everyone's getting over the seasickness. You wake up, walk up to the deck. You don't have work to do. The squid nice. aren't there. You're just moving. You're trying to get to South I America. I mean, the seasickness. You, you see open that water. Like, I didn't know. You see. just, like, it and just it's passed. This incredible <laughs> feeling of... Is there a way? Like there probably something. is, like... Such a professional way to get rid of seasickness. Like, yo, you get a little boat, and then you get a little bigger boat. Then you Dude. Get a That's too long. I'd rather just do it two weeks. I didn't know you could get past seasickness. I mean, your body just naturally. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> but usually people that get seasick are only on the ship for, like, a vacation, and then they go back to regular land. And then if they go again, they'll probably get seasick. How again. interesting. Like, more people okay. come to that. Prezi. Just feel free. Then you'd chit chat with some of the other crew, play chess, read books. But the best was gambling. As long as they had a deck of cards, oh, poker every day, all day. The ship was like a mini casino. And everyone would slowly let their <laughs> guards down. The they're boys. getting to know each other. There's like a, just a real odd. This, this sounds like the dream though. right you now. Had seamen who had done three years out at sea, no problem before. Some of them had gone deep sea fishing in Africa. Tons of experience. Side note: one of the guys that had gone deep sea fishing in Africa, his wife really did not want him to go on this trip because on the way back home last time, they encountered pirates. Oh. It was terrifying. He could have died. So Dude. since then, she was like, I just want you to be in a radius near the land. Because usually when you can see land, it's hard for there to be pirates right. of any nation. I you think know? pirates so are allergic to land. Go. And he's like, babe, I have to go. It's I'm just ready for it. And my friend said he needed help. They need people. If I back out now and they can't find more seamen, how can I ever look at him again? So there are a lot of experienced sailors all the way down to Michael. Michael's a recent college graduate who could not find an office job. He did not graduate with anything that had anything to do with the sea. Nothing like oh, that. Oh no, so he Michael. Just for this, which is a wild escalation of events. He was choking up, telling the rest of the men about how his mom was begging him not to go. She was yelling at him, you've never even been on a boat. You have zero experience. You've never even hung bait on a fishing line. But Michael thought, you know, this is a great way to make money, Mom, and I'm trying to learn a new set of skills. Would you rather me lay around at home and do nothing or work for the next two years? Another guy was training to be a pilot, and he oh, thought that this pirate. was a great way to see the world. Me too. Oh. <laughs> Some guy straight up said, they didn't right up your alley. And once they got all this cash, they were going to buy a new car. They were going to get some designer stuff when they get back. One of them I said, do keep My getting TikToks. Like there's like, a, it's like a new age of piracy going on, like with the, the ships and stuff. Like from the pirates' point of view? No, because no, I get just a bunch of like an escalation of pirate attacks on like cru uh, like ships. Dude, like, that makes know. sense because I'm getting a bunch of oh. TikTok of like these cargo ships now being more armed. Like they like yeah. find out like they yeah, have they like water wire. jets and wires and all that to like just get hmm. the pirates away. It, it, yeah, we're in the new age of pirates. That's How are you happy with that? <laughs> Dude, I saw like torpedoes and bazookas that some of these pirates have. I'm like, it's scary. It's yeah, scary. dude, these like, ah, uh, they're not like Luffy. Face and I sat yeah. her down and I was like, hey, just imagine I went to prison for two years, okay? Just forget about it. But a lot of the men, they were there to pay off debt. One guy had a pig farm that got completely obliterated by a pig disease. He owed oh. money. Charlie, he burned down a building. But none of that really mattered on the boat because there's no way for creditors to track you down on the open water. By early February 2011, yeah, right. the ship had been do? sailing Show in the Pacific for the, over a month. The, and it was almost Chinese ship. New Year. There is this air of excitement and peace within the ship. Everyone's cooking up the feast. They've got eight meat dishes to share. They're Damn. sitting on the ship floor with metal bowls and disposable chopsticks. They're helping each other scoop rice. It's all this like cute moments. They're laughing, joking about how when this is all over, we're going to go to each one of our hometowns and eat the hometown food. I want to try those noodles that you keep talking about from back home. They were allowed to use the ship's satellite phone to call their families back because it's Chinese New Year. And it would be the last time that many of them would ever get to talk to their loved ones. Mm. Two months happen? before okay. arriving back at the harbor, 
Loud music was blasting on the ship. Everyone knew what that meant. It was time to hunt. They were hunting each other. By the time that the music cut off, people would be dead. If you were unlucky, you would be brutally stabbed and thrown overboard with nothing but the loud music ringing in your ears. What the hell happened? If you were really unlucky, you would still be alive when you hit the water. And then you knew that the end would be you waiting for the fins to show up. Because once the sharks smell blood, they come out to feed. There okay. are a few What's distinct phases that the passengers what? would go through. How do we go from like poker and, and mahjong? Games on this boat. The first phase is nothing is wrong until something is wrong. Zach was in the dorm one day when he saw Lou, another crewmate, and he's he left his notebook laying on the bed. They were almost to Peru, so he reaches over, he's flipping around, and it's all sort of like random numbers written down. When Lou comes back into the room, Zach asks, "Hey Lou, what, what are you writing down in your journal?" Oh, yeah, those are the ship's coordinates and where we are. Oh, why? Doesn't the ship track that? No reason. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. Zach kind of waited for Lou to explain further about this whole coordinate situation because it's just a little bit <coughs> weird. But Lou was just right. an interesting man. He always looked like he was deep in thought on this boat about something somewhere, but he would never tell anyone what it was. Which is fascinating because by like month two, everyone is telling everybody their deepest, darkest thoughts and secrets because you don't have anyone else to talk to. All people knew about Lou was that his parents were poor farmers and he had to make money to marry his girlfriend. He was also kind of scrawny. I mean, you would never really look at this man and think this guy is strong. This guy is muscular, but he was. When it came time to unload all the squid and carry the giant metal trays down into the freezer, those things, like I said, they weigh 33 pounds. And because of the size of the tray, it's just really very difficult to balance and carry it down. Lou would offer to do it for Zach because Zach was short and pretty weak, which is crazy considering this is not an easy task. Wow, and Lou Lou's did not too? Get paid oh my Zach's God. Of the work. Why would he do that? It's bizarre. Yeah. Zach said he was said thankful, but at the same time, Lou was so fascinating. Lou liked to look out for people on the ship, but at the same time, he also liked to look down on everyone around him. So mm. it's nice, but it's also kind of mean. He just seemed full of himself, but in a quiet, I don't even want to talk to you because I don't think you're worth it. I don't Damn, think I should waste Lou. my breath on you. That's the type of guy he was. But what could you say? He's the squid king on the boat. There was one month where he caught seven tons of squid, which is about 14,000 pounds. That's about the weight of an elephant of in squid. squid. Or imagine two and a half SUVs parked in front of you, but instead of SUVs, it's just giant piles of squid. <clears throat> in a Damn. single month. Wow. He wasn't even an experienced fisherman, but wow. he knew how to catch squid. And he made it a point to help everyone around him. Like there was this sense of teamwork with him around. It was really tough. It was really bad, but everybody was there for the same reason. He was like a drill sergeant. To be working towards something until two of the workers got sick. It was, uh, it was pretty bad. They couldn't even get up from their beds. There was no doctor on board, limited medications. I mean, nobody knew what was wrong with them. And even then, they were in some really unsanitary conditions. So it's even harder for their immune systems to work overtime to help yeah. them recover. Mm. One of the guys that fell sick was Lou's best friend, Little Minion. He was the youngest on the entire ship, 19-year-old oh. Jin. He was the so little sick, minion he was in bed asking Lou, can you call the company? Just request me be taken off this ship. They don't have to pay me for the past, like, four months of work. I don't care. I just need to go home and see a doctor. It's that bad. I don't even need any of the money. Jin's parents were from Beijing, and they had a bit of money. They had oh. a house, they had a car, which oh. is a pretty big deal in Beijing. The only yeah. reason Jin ever came was because he liked Lou, and he wanted to be a sailor. Oh, no! That's it. He was in it for the ride. The company uh, rejected he was his request to go home to see a doctor. Why? I mean, if you want to go home, then the shit have to go all the way back. Well, they can request that a smaller boat come and get you, and you can uh, pay for that, pay for your fare back. Okay. But not only that, the right. captain Why of the boat, Captain Lee, instead of helping the workers, he called the company like a little snitch and made sure to stop their payments for a month while they recovered. The two sick people. Wow. The two sick men were really upset about this. I mean, I think everybody on the ship was because they had all been working so hard. There was a sense of teamwork established and now it's confirmed. If you get sick from working your hardest, nothing you did matter. Tell me that snitch got stitches though. You exhausted yourself and that's why you got sick. Did even the captain isn't right? on your side rooting for you. Did he and die? this just planted 
a tiny little seed in everybody's minds. The captain in this company, they're not on our team. Mm-mm. And then one comment did it in. Wow. Everybody was sitting around eating when one of the workers looked pensive. Everyone's like, what's wrong? Nothing. I just, um, you know, I, well, it's probably nothing. What is it? We were supposed to depart on December 28th, but do you guys remember how we left a day early on December 27th? Which means technically our contract doesn't make sense because our contract is December 28th to December 28th, 2012. But what if there's some sort of like legal loophole? Because technically we started working December 27th. What if that means our contract isn't really valid and it doesn't mean anything because we didn't start work on that day? Does that mean they can get away with not paying us? I mean, I'm sure they're... That's dumb, right? It's a big company. There's no way. That doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. The workers glance around. The way that they were getting treated already. Yeah, yeah. Like right now they're viewing this this company as the devil. So therefore, I mean, I'm worried. I'm like, are they getting paid? (laughs) Does that loophole, can it happen? Yeah, I don't know. Clearly not, but like you're out of Well, clearly they can mistreat you without anything mattering. Clearly, they don't care about you. Like, they don't even care that you're sick. I see where this comes from. Yeah. Them are I totally the see it. That night, and they decide the next day that they would just ask the captain to clarify a few things. Hell yeah. contract. No big deal, you know? They sit the captain down and ask about the specifics. And if they're still going to get paid the 45,000 yuan. Well, you were going to get paid 45,000 yuan if you didn't catch any squid. What? Yeah, if you caught no squid, you would be guaranteed 45,000 won a year. But if you catch squid, you don't get the guaranteed pay. You get the base pay plus commission. Huh? What? Well, well, how what? Much is the base pay? 1,000 yuan a month. So you're only making 12,000 yuan a year when you're promised 45,000 yuan, and you're just going to hope that you catch enough squid individually to make the rest in commission? So to put that in perspective, think about how devastating this is. What? These men came out into the ship in the middle of nowhere without their loved ones to work 16 hours a day in some of the most brutal conditions imaginable, and their base pay a month would be guaranteed to be 140 USD a month. What? So this is like a scam contract. Yeah. Oh, hell the no. The men were distraught, but the captain reassured them, well, you have the commission structure, so technically you can make 40,000 yuan a year. He explained the commission structure and it only made things worse. Everyone found out that even if they worked as hard as Lou and caught 30 tons of squid in three months, which is the size of a shipping container per person or the weight of a fire truck or a yacht in squid, if they caught that much squid every three months for the next two years, they would make 3,400 yuan a month or about 488 USD a month. If they did not even lift a finger, if they never caught a squid, they would have made 523 USD a month. What? A lot of things are wrong with this. I mean, that finding is this out such is not a great for morale. freaking scam of like, contract. I'm going to pay you $1,000 a month for doing nothing, for just existing. But if you work your ass off to the point of killing your body, mental state, I'm going to pay you less than that. But additionally, most people weren't even catching as much as Lou. They were going to be making a lot less than what they thought. They were going into this for when Lou got word of this pay structure he sat up. there and started doing all the mental calculations there was no way out he screwed himself because he had gotten a loan for all those cigarettes no. technically oh he should be the best off because he's the one catching most of the squid <laughs> but that loan he took it from the fishing company to buy cigarettes he did the math. Even if he worked as hard as he did for the past three months, for the next two years, he would barely make enough to cover the loan he took out for the cigarettes. Wow. Worse than that, worst case scenario, if the, the squid fishing gets slower, he might have to perform hard labor for two years and still owe the fishing company money. Bro, oh, this is like straight up those squid game. Oh my gosh. So for a while, everyone just sat there soaking it in. A lot of the guys never hired attorneys to look over their contracts. First, they didn't have the funds to, but second, they just assumed there was no way that such a big company would screw them over like that. Mm. Since that day, nobody's mind was on fishing anymore. They were all pulling each other off to the side, whispering about something, planning something. There's a saying in China, it's very straightforward. If it's cheap, it's not going to be good quality. If it's good quality, it's not going to be cheap. So when the crew found out that they're making peanuts, like next to nothing, they're going to stop trying. Other squid fishing boats nearby would complete their catch at around 8 to 9 a.m., but 2682 would finish at around 2 p.m. 
Nobody was really trying anymore. Some of the workers would straight up disappear from the deck. They'd be found sleeping in their cabins. Even Lou, his mind is not on fishing. Damn right. A few of the workers tried to talk to the captain and say, please, just let us go home then. Not a single one of us want to be here anymore. We're 17,000 miles away from home. I'm not wasting all this fuel spending months taking you back home because you don't know how to read a damn contract before signing it. Besides, you don't have a license. No boat, including myself, is going to be willing to smuggle you 18 back in through the borders. So remember, 18 of them did not have licenses. Wow. You have to work whether you like it or not. Let this be a lesson to read contracts better next time. Wow. Who's, who's going to force them to work? Enter the next phase of madness. If they're not with you, they're against you. And from the get-go, there were four groups of friends. Okay. There were also a lot of relatives on board, which makes this whole thing even more insane that 22 people get murdered. Wow. But out of the four groups of friends, <coughs> there were the Dalians. Dalian is a part of China on the eastern coast. It's actually very close to North Korea. Now, oh. the Dalian group was led by Captain Lee, the captain of the boat. There were about 10 people in his inner circle, and most of them were professional sailors, and they were part of the management team on the ship. Mm. So none of them really did any of the actual squid fishing. They are there to make sure the ship stayed afloat for two years. The chef was included in this group. Yeah. I mean, they were the closest mm. to the company. Mm. In terms of hierarchy, they're Probably at the a different top, contract as well. sitting on a throne. Yeah, they're, then I mean, their contracts are goalie, different. Led by yeah. Yeah. Now, they were really able to keep to themselves a lot because most of them spoke Mongolian, and none of the rest could understand that. Them. There were only like four or five of them. Then you had the Northeast group, which was run by Lu. They only had about five people in the group. One of them was Mongolian. The other one was Dalian. But they felt more allegiance to Lu rather than their hometowns or like the province that they were from. And the other 12, they were the neutral group. And immediately after Captain Lee refuses to take the ship back home, the leader of the Northeast group, Lu, and the leader of the Mongolian group, Baudi, they start talking. They would rant to each other, whispering, you know, we worked so hard, but this company is a scam. They don't even pay us minimum wage. And they think that we clearly won't get the money stated in the contract. That's why they're acting like this. That's why they're not even listening to us. We want to go back. Slowly, these rants, they turned into a solution. What if is the it? the captain doesn't want to take us home, then we force him. We hijack this ship. Makes sense Lou and to Baldi me. were in. Yeah. So were their groups. Honestly. But both of them were trying to convince the others from the neutral group. Lou sat them down and said, On the way here, I wrote down the coordinates for fun. I didn't think it was going to be useful. But even without the captain, I can retrace our steps and get wow. us back home. And when we get back, I know a pretty good lawyer. We can all sue the company together. Wow. A lot of the neutral people were kind of hesitant. Why? Lou told them, Think about it. And as he walked out of the room, he turned around and said, you know, one more thing. It's not a crime to kill someone in international waters. Mm -hmm. Everyone except the management team. I didn't know that. Is that real? Is that, is that legit? Is that for real? You own yeah, so. Why you know that? Because there's no law. It's international waters. Is it like in that place? I don't know where in the United States. Where it's like it doesn't belong to anyone. I don't know. It's near like one of the yeah. parks. And there's like no law there either. Te yeah, technicality, because if you're over international waters, unless you're... There's probably international laws, but maybe, like, killing someone isn't one of them. I have no idea. Wow. It doesn't surprise okay. me if it is true. That, that is that's amazing. True. I didn't know that, dude. <clears throat> that's, that's insane. Okay. Wow. About the plan. <laughs> well, dude, that's perfectly legal. It's <laughs> scary. Honestly, it like honestly. Right now, if anyone's inside of the captain, there's a problem. <laughs> like, why yeah, would he yeah. be inside of the captain? Clearly, he's just like, they don't want to that's like a corporation. Them. Like, they don't give a shit about you. Why would you even want to continue working? They were paying you below minimum wage. Incredible. Right now, not mm, everyone mm. was on board with Lou and Baudi. They were scared. If they weren't successful, the captain would beat them up all to a pulp. And that was probably just the start of it. And the plan seemed unhinged. Lou and Baudi's group were going around hiding all the knives and sharp objects on the boat. They were going to hold the captain hostage and hope that he just guided them back towards China. Now, this plan was kind of in the works for a few weeks. The whole thing betted on the fact that they had to refuel. So the boat was going to make it back to a port in Peru, refuel, and that would be the time that they finally take over because they need all that fuel to get all the way to China. They can't run out of fuel and they can't show up at a port with the captain held hostage. That's not going to work. So June 16th is the day that they're waiting for. 
They departed December 27th, June 16th. So the whole time they still have to work. They have to make sure that Captain Lee has no idea about their plan. To Why didn't they just get out of the Port of Peru though? <laughs> and then ask for like asylum? <laughs> Cause that shit's a crime what's happening here. What? Bro, uh, do you, what do you think? I mean, I need your opinions on that. I think that's just, it'd be a little hard. It's more complicated. Cause then now you're involving Peruvian officials well, probably That's you won't be able more to talk complicated. to communicate with because they speak Spanish, you speak, what was it, Chinese or Mongolian, you know, depending yeah, on the part Yeah, 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 from. yeah, yeah. And it's just going to make it more complicated. Like, Dude, I, in your mind, you're like, well, we'll refuel, we'll take over the ship, and then we'll make it back, and we don't have to deal with the officials, you know? They want to hijack the ship, though. <laughs> you know, like, they want to get this captain hostage. I feel like... <clears throat> Like like but it was reverse and minds, there was like like people were like we speak Spanish and they were like in Chinese waters. I see your point. I definitely do. I think <laughs> I think it's easier? like I think it's less parties involved the better because like it's, if if they hijack the thing, they hijack it. You know they don't have to deal with anybody there except you know obviously the captain. But then get that under control. We'll make it back. We'll talk to the police once we make it back. That I don't know. That seems less complex than we I, gotta, we gotta deal with the, you know. Peruvian I am officials. shocked. Got to figure out a way to get back. I'm shocked that they touched land at one point. I didn't even think about the refueling situation. <laughs> I'm like, wait, <laughs> they go to the port for a minute? <laughs> okay. Okay. Overtake the ship. And I would say every other week, it was a new thing going on. One week, it'd be like, the plan is on. We got to do this. Then the next week, nobody would be talking about it anymore. So a lot of people thought maybe everybody's kind of cooled off. The plan is off. But Captain Lee would make sure it happened. If hmm? you what talked back do? to Captain Lee, if you were a little too slow, you would walk back to your cabin with a black eye. Or worse, he Bam. would degrade you, scream at you, threaten to throw you overboard to the sharks unless you get down on your knees on the squid ink drenched sticky floors and apologize to him. And Damn. every time he did this, the others would just glance at each other and they would feel a lot more sure about their plan. Like we gotta do this shit. But it wouldn't be Captain Lee that dies. It'd be Chef Zia, <gasps> the replacement chef that would be the first to be murdered. Why June not 16th, 2011, I guess you need the captain. Field at a port in Peru, and it was time. That night, Jin, this is Lou's right-hand man, the 19-year-old, Lou, <laughs> Bao Di, the Mongolian leader, and a few others, they barge into the captain's cabin. What the hell are you guys doing? They're standing there. Take us home. No. I'm not doing this again. Go back to your stations now. The captain turned around expecting them to leave, but he turned back and they were still there. Lou reaches into his pocket, takes out a knife, and stabs it straight into the captain's thigh. Blood starts gushing Ooh. out. The others knock the captain over. They just start pummeling him. All their frustrations, taking it out directly on his face. As he should. They lift Ooh. him up, sit him down on the chair, wrap right? a long, thick rope around him. He's got nowhere to go. He's tied to this chair now. If you don't take us home, we will throw you overboard to the sharks. Okay, okay, I'll take you home. None of this is necessary. I'll take you home. The orders were given. All workers were to reel in the fishing equipment and prepare to set sail. When that announcement went off, immediately, the Dalian group felt like something was wrong. Oh. They rushed towards the captain's quarters, but they're stopped outside by two of Lou's minions. They're screaming minions. at each other at this point. They can even hear Lou screaming from inside the captain's room, I'll kill all of you! A few of the captain's men are putting their hands in the air, showing their palms like, whoa, 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 okay, it's not that serious. If every single person wants to go home, we'll take you home. Really, like, you don't have to be like this. Just tell us right now, and they that'll be the end of it. We can turn around. For weeks. It looks like everything's going smoothly, but in comes Chef Zia. He managed oh. to find a kitchen knife that they didn't hide, and he's screaming, oh, no. who do you sons of bitches think you are trying to hijack a ship? This was not going to end well. I mean, that was on trip, him. Chef Z <laughs> right? and one of Lou's guys are shit. going at it. They literally so tried to stab each other stupid are you? before this. They Wait, hated what? each other. Hold on, hold on. And now a few of the captain's men are putting their hands in the air, showing their palms like, whoa, 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 whoa. okay, <sighs> it's not that serious. If every single person wants to go home, we'll take you home. Really, like, you don't have to be like this. Be Just movie. tell us right now, and that'll be the end of it. We can turn around. That it sounds like a movie like scene right there smoothly, with the, with the but chef. But in comes Chef Zia. He managed to find a kitchen knife that they didn't hide, and he's screaming, Who do you sons of bitches think you are trying to hijack a ship? <laughs> this was not going to end well. 
Damn, the Chef whole Zia. Trip, Chef Zia and one of Lou's guys had been going at it. Like, they literally tried to stab each other last week before this. They <laughs> hated each other. And now both of them had knives in their hands standing in front of the captain's room. Let's go! They're standing there yelling at each other. And then Chef Zia decides he's had enough. <laughs> he walks past the other guys, shoulder butting one of them on his way into the captain's room. And from behind, he hears a sharp noise. He looks down and there's blood coming out of his mouth. Oh. He had been stabbed in the back, literally. Oh. One of the other guys takes an iron bar and <laughs> strikes him an in the iron? back of the knee, so he falls down into the kneeling oh, okay, position, so coughing up blood. One. The guy that Chef Zia had problems with walks around to face him, and he's towering over him because Chef Zia is kneeling now, stares into his eyes, lifts his arm, and plunges the knife into his chest now. <sighs> Lou runs over, grabs the knife from his little minion, his friend, and instead of stopping him or telling him, this isn't the way we're handling things, he starts stabbing the chef's butt and thighs. Ooh. Everyone on the deck oh. could hear the screams coming from the captain's quarters. And then they heard a splash, followed by silence. So Chef Zia. They would find out later that Chef Zia was still alive after all the stabbings. Oh. Lou ordered his men to pick him up and throw him overboard Jeez. for the sharks. Zach was down in the deck area when this happened, yeah. and he remembered 19-year-old Jin coming <clears throat> down from the captain's room, and he said, hey, you got any cigarettes? He sounded so normal. Zach was so scared, he quietly passed him one, and Jin's hand was shaking when he took it from Zach. I don't know. As Chef Zia, you know these men are getting rear-fucked by the company. You know that. Like, how do you take the side of the captain that's also with the side of the thing? Like... I'm not saying like, oh, just because someone threatens you. Although if someone threatens you, he came in with a knife. Like you yeah, come right. in with a knife, That's it's, so it's gonna stupid. escalate the situation. You're not trying to defuse anything. <laughs> yeah, you're not trying to defuse anything with a knife in your hand, mm -mm. you know? Mm -mm. I don't know. It's an unfortunate situation. He just said, Chef Zia's dead. Everything changed that night on that ship. Zach was called up to lose group by the man who stabbed Chef Zia. The guy that hated Chef Zia. Zach's taking it as long as he can because who knows, is he getting stabbed next? I mean, he didn't have problems with anyone on this boat, but like, these people are unhinged. He goes there slowly. Lance, the guy who killed Chef Zia, puts his arm around him. Zach, why don't you go and get some sleep? We like breakfast early. You're gonna be our next chef. Okay, sir. So his name is Lance. Yeah. First killer. First killer. Lance led him to the stairway and pushed him forward. There was blood everywhere from Chef Zia's death. Zach wasn't wearing shoes. He was barefoot. He looked back and Lance is like, come on, go on. He stepped into the blood. And when he got to his cabin, he calmly wiped his feet, took off his rain gear, and he laid down in his bed and he said he could not fall asleep the entire night. He was so scared for his life. He just laid there thinking, what the hell is going to happen next here? Actually, nobody on that ship really slept that night. They were so scared. Baudi, the leader of the Mongolian group, he tried to ease the tension and he said, if we're down a crew, we're down a crew. It's fine. When we get back, we'll say that he fell into the sea or was dragged down by a fish. These things happen at sea all the time. Mm. It's not a big deal. That did not help anyone. Nobody got sleep. The next day, the ship was sailing <clears throat> back towards China. Captain Lee was kept under close watch and the rest of the management Dalian group were scared to do anything against the orders. They were just doing as they were told. Everyone felt like they had to watch their backs. Like they could not turn their back on anyone. They always had to be alert, always listening. And they still had 50 days to go on this ship to get back to China. Oh. It was clear that wow. the new captains were Lu and Baozi. They took turns on duty. They watched the captain. They make sure that the boat was headed towards back home. They patrolled the deck with knives and sticks. Zach focused on cooking. The cargo still had fresh vegetables, so he tried his best to cook the yummiest food because who knows, maybe you get off for not even cooking good food. Who even knows anymore? What the hell? And eventually, that slowly. You don't Everyone know what kind of what point. Again, playing cards, smoking around each other. Yo, like, what kind of coup de tat was that? Like, now it seems like the new regime is even worse. Well, not not really, but now they're working for their lives, too. I mean, that's also probably one of the reasons that, like, the neutrals didn't want to take a side. Because, like, if you do have a coup de tat, you know, the, the order... Because, obviously, you know, the company guys are going to start killing people. But now, these crazy guys are involved. They're, cool. they're crazy. Like, I thought, <laughs> the, you know, they, they, they know kill the chef. Do. They kill the chef. I'm like, okay, so they're trying to make the point that they're serious about going back home. No, these dudes are 
crazy as well. Like, yeah, it's like not just happening. like, hey, we're trying to get back home. It's like, no, no, no. Like, they are taking control and going power crazy a little bit, it sounds. You know? It's always fucked. Everybody like, it's not it. neutral. Like, something was happening with Lou. You can sympathize yeah. with workers trying to get back home because, like, but then it stops being about that when other individuals take Innocence. another step. Like, yeah. No, 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 no my bad. Step. To, you know, innocent, like, to other innocent individuals. <laughs> Like the crew members aren't your enemy. They're not the company fucking you over. Get back yeah, home. Don't like, be an why? asshole. Don't have a power trip for fifty days. You're gonna get off the ship eventually. I don't know. Like, what what the, the hell? It seems that there's an issue with with these with these two new okay, captains. In his though. mind, mm -hmm. Lou did not like hearing the whispers. Oh. If he felt like you were whispering with someone, he would sneak oh. up on you so quietly you wouldn't even know that he's oh. standing inches away from your head. And then he would loudly ask, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> oh, jeez, nothing. Jeez. Sometimes he would scream from afar. You guys over there, what are you gathering and speaking so softly about? Are you afraid someone might hear you? He felt like he was going crazy. Paranoia. He people were whispering about him. They were trying to kill him. He could feel it. <laughs> Lou went around double checking, triple checking that all the knives were confiscated. The life wraps were tied up with steel bars and the life jackets were also locked up so that nobody could escape. Nobody could hurt him. Lou was suspicious of everyone, even mm. his closest friends. Oh, Zach wasn't Lou's close friend, but he noticed that something very dark was happening inside of Lou. <laughs> he was convinced the management team were going to kill him and take credit for saving the ship and crew from the hijackers. He thought, they're going to go to the company and say, look what I did. Look how I stopped the hijackers. Pay me extra money. The others tried to calm Lou down. They wouldn't do that. That would just be so dumb. You know, I think at this point, all of us, we just want to go home. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. But one night, uh, one but of when Lou's men pulled into the prevail. side in the cabin and he whispered, what? they're trying to fight back. They've asked me to join up against you. Go up against you and all of your friends. Who is? The management team. Lou was upset, but not surprised. What else did they say? Bo, the guy who was telling him everything he knew that the managers were talking about, he said, <laughs> July 20th near the coast of Hawaii, they're gonna do something. So instead, that day, Lou ordered the slaughter of six men from the management the? group. Oh. And Bo. If Bo was out here spilling all the secrets of the management team, oh. he could not be trusted Shit with for Lou's being secret. a snitch. The day of the hunt, the second Lou captain? used the loudspeakers to play music. Uh -huh. He didn't want the neutral people so. to freak out at the sounds of I don't know the second captain. But all it did was put everyone more on edge because it's not like a soundproof <laughs> vacuum. They can hear screams. They can see blood. They can hear splashes of people screaming as they're being thrown overboard. It just feels like they're in some sort of horror movie. The second person to be killed on that boat was stabbed through the back as well. The knife went through his entire body. He was Jeez. still alive and trying to run away from the killers, what but they the blocked fuck? his path and just went into this frenzy, stabbing him. When he finally gave up fighting, they dragged him like a rag doll to the edge of the boat and threw him in the water. The guy they just killed, his brother was on the boat too, so they needed to get him next. Oh my god. They ran into the brother's cabin. It was a coordinated attack. One person grabbed the brother's arms, pinned them upwards on the bed. The others just started stabbing everywhere. The, the bed, the bed sheets, the mattress completely soaked in blood. It was dripping onto the floor underneath. He was dead when he was thrown overboard, like his brother. Next, the killer started hunting the rest of the management team. They lured out Peter from his bedroom. They were waiting behind <clears> the door. <throat> The minute he stepped out, they stabbed him. Peter started freaking out, decided to make a run for it. He ran to the deck, and he had a split-second choice to make. Either die by stabbing like the others, or drown. He looked down, and he jumped to his death with the squid. Lou was content, but he wasn't done. He went into the cabins, dragged another one out, stabbed him, threw him into the sea. The and fuck? there was just one more person he wanted to kill that day. Who? Wang. They barge oh. into Wang's cabin, just start stabbing him everywhere. Wang was asleep, so he woke up screaming in pain. He's trying to grab anything nearby to hit the killers with. He ends up falling from his bed. They stab, disembowel him, and they taunt him. What's the matter? Your guts are spilling out. What the fuck? Oh, no. What to do now? When they were done, the killers were drenched in blood. Jesus Zach was in that same room as Wang, laying frozen in his bunk bed. <laughs> Lou straightened up, turned. He's covered in blood, and he saw Zach laying there. He looked at him and said, I asked you to join us at the start, but you didn't. Wait, Zach no. was Wang there? With Wang. So he just witnessed the whole murder? And he did not move. He just what laying What happened there. to Zach? He just looks at him and says, I asked you to join us at yeah. the start, but you wouldn't. Are you scared now? 
Zach was terrified. It seemed like Lou was excited after the killing. He had this huge smile on his face that Zach would never forget, but it would not be the last time that he saw it. Lou was no longer a man. He was like an animal. Jeez. Lou smiled and said, don't worry, Zach. I'm not going to touch you. You're like my brother. And with that, he walked out, leaving a trail of blood behind him. Jeez. Christ. Zach did not believe a single word he said. He had known him for a few months, and there were already 10 dead people. Who could believe anything Lou said? Damn. Zach said, you can't imagine how powerful Lou became when he was killing people. He was a completely different man. When Lou's men were too scared to actually stab someone to death, Lou would walk over to, quote, show him how it's done. He would ruthlessly plunge knives into victims, and it was the full descent of Lou's madness. He wasn't even done killing. He was no God, longer the Lou that anybody recognized. And I don't want to say that to give this man an excuse, but he truly becomes more and more unhinged. And I don't think that he's insane. Like, I don't think he could use that as a defense, but he, he's still an animal in prison. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. That night, the hunt continued. Bo, the informant that warned Lou about mm. all of this, he was stabbed and thrown into the water. This just became a pattern. Men were either stabbed and thrown into the water, dead or alive. Others were given a choice, and I don't think they're being nice about it. They just want to torture you. They would give you the choice. Don't be stabbed and see if you can swim. Swim to land. Maybe you'll make it. Jump. Sometimes Lou would get all Pirates of the Caribbean, or I, I don't know what movie or what reality he's living in, but he would make the man stand on the edge of the boat and he would kick them in the chest, like literally kick them off the boat into the cold, dark sea. This is the Pacific Ocean. On Wait, so now he's killing more people? Yeah, just for fun now. Anyone what the he fuck? thinks is going to kill him, uh, he's like, I might as well just kill him. I, I don't even know. Maybe they're my friend, but if I feel like they looked at me a little weird. I'm oh, gonna shit. This is the Pacific Ocean. Uh, on average, paranoia. it's about 13,000 feet deep. I mean, there's really no answer on what this would feel like. But one netizen said, there are problems when you're thrown into the ocean, deep into the ocean. First danger, drowning. But let's say you have a life jacket, which these men didn't. Or let's say you managed to keep your head above water. Great. The next danger is cold. Cold water extracts heat from you very, very quickly. In Arctic water, you have less than 15 minutes till things in your body start breaking down. In 60 degree water, maybe a few hours. Warmer tropical water, maybe days. But then you have the danger of wildlife. Sharks. Mm -hmm. Time estimate on that? Unknown. But let's say you can overcome all those things. The next issue is MASD. Moisture associated skin damage. Oh. And that is in rights. You know how your skin gets all wrinkly in the pool after a few hours? Your skin can start to blister. After a day in water, your skin can start to peel off. Oh. And that would, without a doubt, attract the aforementioned wildlife. Time to death? Probably a few days, max. And the beating tropical sun is going to make it pretty hard to avoid oh. drinking the salty water all around you. Even if you have the discipline of a Navy SEAL, you could still end up drinking some accidentally. Mm -hmm. Drinking this water is only going to dehydrate yeah. you faster. Also, the salty ocean will absorb some of your fluids through contact osmosis. Although dehydration is said to be fatal in about three days, it'd probably be two days. After the first hunt on the ship, the loud music cut off and a total of 11 people were gone from the ship. Damn. There were 33 people. Now there's only 22 well, people on the ship. Okay. But it was supposed to be 23. Lou was sure. He thought about which people he wanted to kill. It was premeditated. So where did the extra person go? Where did they go? Were they hiding somewhere? <clears throat> Lou starts losing it, trying to count the life jackets, making sure none of the rafts are missing. The college student, Michael, who came because he couldn't find a job, he was missing. Mm -hmm. Because everybody snaps in different ways. Michael had just graduated college and he knew even if he made it all the way back to land, he would never be able to look at himself or what? people ever the same. Not after all the blood that he saw on this boat. So he jumped off the ship to his death. What? Whoa. When Lou found out, he had this incredibly <clears throat> condescending laugh and he said, why did he jump? I wasn't going to kill him, that poor kid. I was going to use him as my spy. Michael had snapped. For what? And Zach, he was in full survival mode. His brain blocked out that how is so bad sad. it was. He was blocking out everything that he was seeing. Oh my the God, he could have been at home chilling had some sort of idea in his mom's was when house. He, was prepping meals. he went from prepping 32 meals to now just 22. Once when he was serving meals, he got so anxious, he went up to the deck and he started pacing. He felt like he was going to have a panic attack. And one of Lou's guys came up to him and said, stop stressing out. Nobody has it in it for you. We're all buddies. We're not going to touch you. 
look, if you get a proper job one day, I'll look out for you, you know? But all of it just sounded so fake. Mm. Zach snapped at him crying. Just warn me first if you guys decide to kill me, okay? And I'll just throw myself overboard, save you the trouble. Zach started looking for small spaces to hide on the boat. I mean, there was nowhere. He even wow. Okay, so to put simply, no, murder is not legal in international waters. Murder is not legal. It's not legal. You cannot kill someone in international waters and claim immunity from the laws of the land. I figured, because I was like, the reason I stay thinking is like, why doesn't, like, why don't criminals just do their crimes in water? Wait, wait, hold up. It said, if a crime occurs on such a vessel, the flag state typically takes jurisdiction and is responsible for investigating and prosecuting the perpetrators. So if you're on a ship, I guess if you're an unclaimed land, it's legal. I don't know. But it makes sense if it's on the ship. Mm, I don't like how much you know about this now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just taking guesses. <laughs> okay. But no, but it makes sense with the flag flying because it's the like it's the vessel, right? Like it's the right. vessel belonging to that state. Okay. That okay. Country. Yeah, because I was like, then why don't criminals just do the criminal stuff <laughs> when they murder people in open waters? You know, like they get away scot free. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me, but. <laughs> Uh, it's not that's not the case evidently huh. unless you're in unclaimed lands which i don't know what that would count as an island i don't know if it's, you have a private island is that not do you have your own rules do you not have to pay taxes <laughs> i mean Briefly it's your own island i guess not about getting into the fresh water yeah. tank but know. it was so easy to spot him inside hmm. and there's no way that for him to suck. close the lid from the inside he tried to rip up any sort of foam insulation in the ship to see if he could crawl into the insulation. He tried stealing a life jacket or a raft. I mean, anything, something. All he came down to was, if he's out in that water and he's still alive, he could maybe eat fish eyes. They have drinkable water content in them. No. Oh. That's all he knew. He was taught, eat fish eyes if you're thirsty. But even that's pointless. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, they can't even see land nearby. The closest land to them was Japan. And Japan was a thousand miles away at this point. Jeez. If you took a boat, you would travel a thousand nautical miles in five to ten days, depending on the boat. Five to ten days on a boat. Mm. With a no motor. Way. That's if the sharks didn't even get Zach first. What was the point of staying alive in the water when he was going to die anyway? God damn it, does Zach make Zach's it? Zach's new mission became just to stay alive for as long as possible because if he were killed and thrown Wait, overboard, they're interviewing Zach, at right? least he could be a <laughs> little bit closer to home. Okay, I'm like, did he Maybe make it? Did he die? Where's Zach? As they got near to Japan, Lou told everybody on that boat, 22 people, <laughs> that he had a friend in Japan that could get them fake passports, but they would need to send money to get it done. Oh he wanted God. all of them to use the satellite phone to call their families, ask them to transfer $1,000 into Lou's girlfriend's account, and she would get them fake passports. There was just something about the way that Lou was urging everyone. That's so this. fishy. Yeah, the message was very money. clear. The underlying message was, I don't care if you get these fake passports or not, because I don't think you're going to get off this boat. <clears throat> the Mongolian group were now getting sick of Lou. They were Yo. sick of him bossing them around, acting like they were dumb. They knew what he was planning to do. They knew where that money was going. The plan to overthrow Lou was in the works by the Mongolians. The first step right. they decided was to create chaos within <clears throat> Lou's group. Bao Di, the Mongolian leader, would pull aside 19-year-old Jin, Lou's 19-year-old mm. best friend slash sidekick, and he would tell Jen that Lou plans to kill everyone else on the boat minus a few of his old buddies, and he was planning on escaping to Japan without the rest of them. And Jen's not a good candidate to keep alive. First of all, he's too young, he's too immature, Lou might feel like it's a risk, and he's still too frail from being sick. Baudi's plan was to plant seeds in Jin's mind, mm. make him want to move over to the Mongolian side, and it seemed like it was working. <clears throat> Jin agreed with them. He has been ruthless. I feel like he's changed. He keeps pressuring me to call my family to give them money. I don't know. It's just so heartless. Side note. Baudi approached Jin because Jin was actually from Mongolia. So his parents oh. now lived in Beijing, but he was from Mongolia. So there's a bit of an alliance there. He chose him out of everybody else. Immediately after their conversation, Jin went to Lu and said, I have something to tell you. Hmm. What is it? It's really serious. Baudi wants me killed. How did you know? Yes. Four days after what? the last hunt, the one that killed a good chunk of the boat off, Lou was planning the final slaughter. Wait, Lou so so Jin, the little kid, immediately sold 
Okay. The Mongolians out to the Wow. Yeah. Lou pulled up a chair in front of the captain, who was still being held hostage, by the way. He sat in front of him, elbows on his knees, and he said, I've got seven or eight men's blood on my hand. And if the rest of you want to live, you'll have to get blood on your hands, too, including you, Captain. Your best friend, Officer Wang, is dead. Bao Di killed him ruthlessly. I mean, <laughs> I'm evil, but he was really brutal with it. Stabbed him over and over and over again. I mean, I thought the guy was possessed. I didn't know where he had the energy. Not when it came to squid fishing, that's for sure. The this feels like, like such a movie. It's crazy. Like, I feel like I'm watching a movie. Dude, the way that, that she's describing everything, like I see it in my mind, and my mind is all happening. Like, I see it so like movie, perfectly. Like movie shots. You know? Yeah. Like, we got that oh music my in gosh. the background, too. This is crazy, because this is real lives. This is real lives. Yeah. That we're taken, and real lives that were affected, and it's fucked. <sighs> but, like, why do you, like, damn. Jesus. During the hunt, and there was loud music <clears throat> playing, so we had... Like, this all started because the company were assholes. Like, that's where it's all started from. Yeah. Like, but now, say that, that this, like, being an this, asshole. These, these paranoias, these just psychotic tendencies coming out with the fishermen. What the fuck? No idea who killed who. He just knew that some of his best so friends on that fish. boat were dead. He knew there was blood everywhere and a third of the crew were gone after that night. <laughs> and now Lou's telling him it was Bao Di who killed your best friend. Captain Lee starts getting worked up at the realization that Bao Di killed his best friend, and Lu tells him, there's a way to get revenge. Kill Bao Di. Kill him, and we'll let you live too. Lu's favorite thing on this boat was having his friends kill people. He called it getting their hands dirty. If they don't have dirty hands, they would have no incentive to not turn them in when they get to land. He needed everybody to be bonded by blood and murder. Damn. He told Captain Lee if he got his hands dirty, he would let him live. Is Captain Lee agreed. But there was another boy on that boat that really wanted to help. Charlie. Charlie is Zach's friend who introduced him to this squid fishing, mm. squid games torture. Charlie really wanted to be accepted by Lou. He practically showed up at Lou's cabin door on a daily basis, begging him, being like, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. Like, don't you ever worry. If you ever need anything at all. Charlie's smart. He's trying to live. I'm here for you. I can help you. Please help me, Charlie, live. Some argued that Charlie did everything he could to survive. Others argued the guy is just bloodthirsty. I guess it's up for you to decide. But Lou decided to use Captain Lee and Charlie, who had been somewhat neutral since all of this, and he would use the two of them to lure Bao, Bao Di, onto the deck. That night, Bao Di came onto the deck alone. Charlie snuck up behind him, stabbed him in the back. Captain Lee came up in front of him, pretended to catch him from his fall, and then stabbed him through the chest. Jeez. Together, the captain and Charlie took out their knives and plunged again and again in the front and back in unison on the boat. What the fuck? Bao Di broke free, stumbled to the edge of the boat, and threw himself over the edge. Jesus Christ. Charlie smiled because it was his first kill ever, and he smeared all the blood over his face and screamed, I've been oh, bloodied now. What the hell? Lu lured out the rest of the Mongolian <clears throat> inner circle to come back onto the deck. Three of them were forced to jump into the ocean, two of them were stabbed <laughs> to death, and then flung over the side of the ship into the water. And at this point, there were only 16 people left on the boat. Oh, man. Lou was exhausted from his night of killing. He ordered everybody stop, mainly himself, and he gathered everybody's knives. He went back to his room with two of his minions guarding the door. But that night, after getting zero sleep, after hearing all the screams and just trying to ignore it and act like nothing was happening, trying to act invisible so that he wasn't randomly targeted next, Zach was laying in bed when he feels a tap on his shoulder. It was one of Lou's guys. Lou wants to talk to you. Uh -oh. Zach froze. His head starts spinning. He's thinking, okay, I'm next. He gets up as slowly as possible, savoring the last moments of his life. He's dragging his feet, following the henchman to the captain's cabin that Lou had taken uh -oh. over. The door opens, and Lou is sitting on the bed. He looks up. Don't be scared. It's nothing. <clears throat> we'll be in Japan in a couple of days, and you've got nothing to worry about. You don't have blood on your hands. Anyone without blood on their hands can just go back to China, and everything will be fine. Then he looked at Zach and said, Go to the kitchen and cook some noodles. We're starting to get hungry. Jeez. Zach gulped, opened the door, and walked out with his life. He was one of the lucky ones. I'll make the best out goddamn of noodles of your like life, Lou. Only 15 were left now, but we know that only 11 come back, so we still have four more to go. There's four more. 
They were just a few days out from Japan when everyone starts scrambling at 4 a.m. The ship had suddenly lost power. The engines were down. The lights are oh. down. The entire ship is tilting to one side. Everyone's belongings are just crashing into the sides of the walls. Everyone's running out of their bunk beds, running towards the deck and the captain's quarters to figure out what the hell is happening. Lou orders a thorough check of the ship and he discovers two things. There were only 14 people left on the boat. So one person is missing. And the ship's main valve was open. The ship's valve lets water into the main area of the ship. Oh. They were able to stop it, block it, the, stop the water that's coming in. Wow. But it's too late. The ship feels like it's slowly sinking. It was discovered that in the middle of the night while everybody slept, one of the engineers left alive from the management team, opened the ship's valves, deliberately trying to kill everyone on wow. board, and then jumped into the water himself. <gasps> Lou ordered everyone to use the water pump to help pump out the water, but when that wasn't working fast enough, he ordered them to tie together all the floatable things, like planks of wood, anything. Float them together. We need to get all the life rafts out. They really only had like one working life raft that was inflatable, and they need to stock it with food. So if this ship goes down, at least they have food and they can mm. try and survive out in the open waters. <laughs> And when the ship kept tilting dramatically to one side, they did the last thing you want to do after committing mass murder on a boat. What? They sent out a distress signal so that they could be found. The boat was going down. Either they all die <coughs> out at sea or they try to find a way out of this. Lou's survival instinct was very strong. So there were three people that were now loading up this life raft and they had plopped it into the water. It's working. So now it's up to them to climb down the ladder and put the food in. So they do. And um, Zach, left. Zach sees them floating away. And at first he's oh, confused and he shit. thought something bad was happening. So he threw them a rope. But one of the men on the raft grabs the rope he throws at them, throws it back into the water. And he screams, they have knives. They're planning on killing more men. We're not coming back. By the time Lou saw what was happening, the raft was so far gone out. It was Jeez. the size of your fist. Wow. He did not scream or curse like everyone expected him to. He just stared into the water he slowly sat down on the deck everyone got quiet the boat is sinking the raft is gone the distress signals wow. were sent out but who knows if people are ever coming and even if they did they were gonna die for their crimes after a long pause lou got up and said it's fine if they rescue us we blame them for everything the people on the raft they killed everyone left us for dead that's what we say nobody was listening to him though they were staring behind him at the blue water he whipped around and the raft was drifting back to the boat. Huh? The current was sending the raft back straight <laughs> into the ship. And no amount of pedaling was helping Holy these people get away from no. the ship. And any humanity left in some of these people broke that moment. Oh, they no. became full on animals. There's a very famous quote. Holy crap. That is It sounds the like worst. a movie. It is so ridiculous that that happened. The freaking water's bringing them back straight to the boat, like, directly. Kev, that is not real. That is not real. That is I mean, so I think that's karma, <laughs> like, in the highest I wanted extent. to say karma. I wanted to say karma, but, like, dude, they're trying to live. <laughs> like, I don't know. Their intentions were good in the beginning. It got out of hand and paranoia and whatever <sighs> underlying mental like, challenges that they may have had, you know, just like. Yo, know. guys, Anything would you call this it? karma of those the three men in, in the in the floatable that they, they tried to dip with the food? Would you call it karma? A little bit. <laughs> let, let us know. Let us know. I was thinking of the word karma, too, but I'm like, that's so insensitive. To everything that's happening. I think in the whole situation is karmatic, the abyss, though. The abyss you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. everybody that was, like, either watching this stuff happen, that maybe just try to keep quiet or whatever, you know, everybody that was involved, from, like, the crew that was, like, very actively <laughs> fucking them over and then representing the company entity. The without, management team. Exactly. Yeah. To the people that, you know, obviously were getting screwed over and they had good intentions in the beginning, but then it got carried away. And then obviously to everybody that watched this shit happen, everyone is at fault somehow or somewhere. You know what I mean? Dude, like, the main part is the goons. Lose two goons that are always by his side. Yeah. Jesus I mean, Christ. There's definitely more people at fault, but I don't think anybody's not at fault either. Yeah. This isn't and maybe these shit. men have been gazing too long into the abyss of the ocean. Because now <laughs> they were animals. <laughs> 
it had only been eight months. When that raft floated back, all of them grabbed <laughs> knives, squid knives, anything they could, and their spit was spewing out of their <laughs> mouths. They were screaming. Their eyes were crazed. They grabbed all the weapons. Veins were popping out of their necks, and they started chucking weapons at the raft. They were hunting <laughs> for humans again. Many of the ones on the raft, the three of them were stabbed. Knives were getting thrown and embedded into their arms, Oof. sides, thighs, the raft. Blood was seeping out of the raft and making the water around them red. One of the men, Song, he jumped into the water and started swimming towards the ladder of the ship, begging Lu to spare his life. Lu ordered him to be pulled in. He had a head wound, he was bleeding. The others, they escaped, but they were screaming in the water for their lives because the sharks are coming soon, they could smell the blood. Lu squats down next to Song on the deck, and he grabs a paper towel and puts it to his head. He turns around, and he said, Zach, Xavier, you guys are the only ones that don't have blood on your hands. Throw him into the water. So he literally only brought him up so that these two could get blood on their hands. Wow. Zach was like, what? Like I said, you guys are the only ones. Xavier was so scared, he grabbed the nearby squid knife and he braced himself and started speed walking towards Song, but Lou stopped him and said, too much of a mess. Just tie him up and throw him into the water. So that's what they did. And the whole time Song was begging, Lou, please, we're brothers, remember? Why are you ditching me? You don't hate me that much, right? I promise I'm not going to say anything when I get back. Lou just watched quietly as Song was lifted and thrown to the water. And then everything went silent. And almost like some sort of pirate legend, a typhoon hit, oh. washing off a lot of the blood on the deck and buying the crew some time before the distress signal could be intercepted and wow. the boat come to rescue them. For some reason, the boat did not sink. It didn't sink, but the engines were no longer capable of turning back on, so they can't move. So they're just stuck in the water, going with the way of the current. Damn. Lou ordered everybody clean up the blood, and while the storm raged on and the rain was pouring in, Lou went over the plan over and over again. Everyone took turns memorizing it. Bao Di and his men killed the management team off, and then the <clears> four <throat> that died on the raft, they're the ones that killed Bao Di and the Mongolians, and then they escaped, leaving us for dead, trying to sink the ship. The last time Zack saw Lou was in prison. Zack was walking past Lou's cell. Lou was laying in bed, the same way he laid on the bed on the boat. It's like nothing had changed. He was still on the boat in his mind, it looked like. Lou smiled at Zack through the bars. He lifted one of his hands, pointed two fingers at Zack, cocked it like a gun, pew, shooting it at Zack, and he smiled. That was the last he time Zack like saw Lou before of a he died. Like he All 11, he... quote, yeah. survivors of the boat were found guilty. The sentences were handed out November 14th, 2012, which, side note, Lou's mom even said none of this would have happened if the victims were strong swimmers. I guess implying oh. everyone could have swam away from what a homicidal the maniac. It was just a wild statement to make in court. What the Six hell of the men were mom? sentenced to death. The other five were given lesser sentences in varying degrees because I guess the courts decided they didn't play as active of a role in the killings. Zach was released after four years on good behavior. <clears throat> and on his way out, he saw 19-year-old Jin. And Zach asked the guards to wait. He got up to the steel bars and asked Jin, Hey, do you need anything? I'm getting out. I can mail you something. 23-year-old Jin smiled and said, Don't worry about it. My parents are sending me stuff. But look after yourself and just forget all this happened. And with that, he smiled and he waved at Zach. Jin had been sentenced to death. Oh. Lou Jin, along with four others, were executed well, I, yeah, in 2016. They were more of the Lou decided in prison that he was going to escape. He tried to convince his cellmate to help him. He was caught. And uh, instead of, I don't know, putting him into like solitary confinement, they just tied him to his bed every day by all four limbs. Yeah, he was like that for four years until he was executed. Xinfa Food Company, the company that sent the ships mm. out, they compensated the victims around $60,000 each. Some victims' relatives stated they were pressured by the food company to not talk to the media about anything. And in the end, nothing happened to this food company. Wow. That's and so a fun. lot even of the these still fishing exists? companies in China, if you even just Google like squid fishing industry, it is scary. There have been bodies that have been washed ashore notes in water bottles filled with rice that have been washed ashore random people from southeast asia that have been recruited to work on these ships they would be just dumped on the ports like literally about to die and they were all on these squid fishing boats 
what like the, the stories coming out of there so are fun. really terrifying and like they were the ones that it. mentally broke these men not saying that they may have broken eventually or not but they were like their mistreatment of them wow it's just no justice and do nothing, nothing happen to changed. it. This company might still exist, dude. <clears throat> Probably though. Nobody. Probably a We're different name. You know, they just change it up. That's it. Because I guess it's not something. It wasn't even on my radar. You know, it, it was never something yeah. that comes up on TikTok or is on the news of like, you guys will never guess what happened. It just kind of gets buried with everything else going on. But it is. It, it's something I would look into if you guys are into they play wow. or and just curious, intrigued, yeah. want to do something. Zach is now back in his hometown taking care of his mom. His girlfriend, the whole reason he went on this yeah. fishing trip for, she ended up moving away. And Zach knows that he could technically go looking for her and explain to her what happened and try to win her over the love of his life. But he can't. He says he feels embarrassed even at the idea of seeing her again. Wow. Because he's just a village boy and she's in Shanghai now. And that <sighs> is the story of the crazy eight months at sea i mean i just kept thinking about this story because right now there's a cruise that's going on for nine months and i know obviously the situation is different but this is no. like the world's longest cruise is nine months no. it's happening right now i think recently it got flooded there was a little bit of drama on board and i just can't imagine being out at sea i know they stop by the ports and they don't go as deep into the sea as the squid fishers nor are they in you know it's a luxury mm. cruise it's like seventy thousand dollars per person for nine months what? yeah like what? the All sweet life of Zach and still, Cody. Unhinged. Not that sweet. I get it's a large experience compared to this, but I think just the idea of being stuck on a ship with that many people, strangers, it, it just feels <laughs> scary. But that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this case? Do you think that any 33 people left on a boat would succumb to this oh, under gosh. the exact circumstances that they were in? How would you oh. have handled it? And do you think Zach is a survivor or he's also a villain? Let me know in the comments. And okay. I keep thinking, I think it's going to end. You guys is that. Zach a survivor or a villain? Kevin, go. Bada bing, bada uh, I think, bada I think, bada bing, bada I think he definitely played a part. Um, he watched it all happen. He watched people get murdered. Obviously out of fear, you know, but... <laughs> To be a part of it, just in general, it's like, fuck. Dude, I don't Everyone know, man. A part in all of that. I think I think Zach needed to do a lot more to survive. That's I the don't thing. Know. But in an effort to survive, you give up on those morals because you need. To yeah. So with that being a said, I don't know if he just pushed not an one. Excuse. I agree. It's not. It's a reason. I don't think it excuses. Watching other people no, get murdered and then not no. trying stuff, so, you know. Yo, I mean? but not everybody can. So. This 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 freaking squid business is fucking insane. I don't know what's like to this day. I'm assuming it's kind of the same because how yeah. much control can you have over a boat and like yeah. you know these corrupt companies who don't give a shit about anything like mm -hmm. since they're talking about you know be, being the coast of of peru and all that along with with the squid ships there's also like the illegal hunting of whales that happen around that area as well mm -hmm. that's just as fucked as, as you know so i don't know what kind of like morals and business tactics are happening there but it's just freaking sad but dude rotten mango amazing storyteller it's crazy amazing. It's like a movie oh my honestly. god Hopefully you guys enjoyed wow. again. Uh, a shout out to Hope for suggesting this. You know, hope you guys enjoyed yeah, the reaction. This is a terrible yes. Didn't mean like that. Um, but yeah, guys, we are gonna be checking out more Rotten Mango because a lot of people are suggesting on the Ruby tier. So if you guys want to suggest certain specific Rotten Mangoes, make sure you guys get on the Ruby tier. Mm -hmm. Yes, when we mm -hmm. post, mm -hmm. we usually give you guys a heads up on what we're gonna do the Ruby post. But see you guys next. That's time. right. Peace. Ciao.